Hello. Um, I am Francis, and uh, I am very happy to be here. Um, I am a native of Burkina Faso, and uh, Burkina Faso is a country in which more than 80% of the population are neither able to read nor write. Ladies and gentlemen, in this part of the world, people never heard the term of design or architecture, but things are being done. Due to the lack of secure income, people build a house by themselves. And as a model, they just copy their neighboring house. In this part of the world, in West Africa, we have only one school for architecture, and it is in Togo. Ladies and gentlemen, in this part of the world, when you happen to build a wall for somebody, for a family, which is straight and able to stand a rainy season, people are happy. Um, I suppose I don't need to explain to you how great a privilege it is for me to be standing before you today from Gando, my home village in Burkina Faso, to Berlin in Germany to attend architecture and to have the opportunity to speak to you is a big, a big step. So, please, don't expect from me. <laughs> don't expect from me a lecture about modern architecture in general or for the African countries. What I'm going to do is to show you how, together with the people of my home country, we're just trying to build houses which are able to stand many, many rainy seasons. This is the capital city, Ouagadougou. Left, they call it informal. Right, they call it formal. <laughs> I don't know what is formal and informal. What I know is that a lot of people are coming to the capital city looking for jobs, for better life. And they just build a house by themselves. And they set up. They have their business. They do everything to survive, and they're really happy. But what happened is the government said, this is informal. So what they do is just to break everything down and try to put a structure. You know, the problem is we are copying the Western model, but we don't know the story of it, and we don't own the means to make it in the proper way. And that is a, a big problem. We build houses in which, you can see, you need air, air condition to be able to stand inside any country which belongs to the poorest in the world. is a wrong solution. China, ladies and gentlemen, has become a big example for us. My people just go there, buy cheap merchandise, and by the way, they copy how Chinese are building. Look up to the roof. <laughs> but this is the reality in Ouagadougou. The country doesn't have the power to provide the infrastructure for the people. When you need water, you have to carry this, and a, a thing like that. But I'd like to bring you in a village where every Burkina Bay is coming from. I am from a village. And the architecture looks like that. You can see the structure. Uh, grandpa, grandma, it is a big compound where everybody is living. And I cannot show it because I miss a pointer. You will see a little one, a big, big one. People are there together, generation for generation, and they really live peaceful. When, when they don't look to the West, when they don't look to the media, when they don't follow the information saying that we are poor, 
So you start to say, oh, I am poor. I need somebody to help me. So the architecture is like that. People just come together and start to build. And at the end, you have to protect the house uh, against rain. And the color is beautiful, of course. Um, what happened is they're different. Because you finish building, you go to nature and try to find the color from one tree. But nature is not a fabric, not a, um, a factory. You cannot get a lot, enough color for the same compound. So it's become different. And what happened is after a rainy season, it's looked like that. The color disappeared, but at the same time, the compound has grown. When I have a message to pass is please, please help me to never put an African compound under UNESCO protection. That means punishing the people. An African compound is made to grow when there is necessity and to shrink when there is necessity. And we don't care. And by the way, they will come and say, these Africans, they don't respect convention. They just changed the color. We didn't. <laughs> Nature did it. So the most building material in my part of the world is clay. And we have some problem with it. Water is destroying it, fire. And this is a typical school building in Burkina Faso. Um, inside, it looks like that. Myself, I sat in a class like this with more than 160 other pupils. Ladies and gentlemen, you can imagine the temperature inside a building like that when it is 40 degrees outside. This is something I'm criticizing. Right, it is a mosque. Left, it is another mosque, the old one. Somebody came and just gave the people a new mosque. It's good. I like presents. <laughs> but, but this kind of, of, of present is bad because it is destroying traditional knowledge. You give a concrete mosque to the people and you forgot to teach them to save their technical knowledge. I cannot come on top, but you know what for are the woods? On top, people use these to make the repairs every year. And giving them a mosque made by concrete, you help them to destroy their own uh, rich, richness. So it's okay? Okay. So, yes, uh, I get a chance to attend higher education in Germany. And as a student, I had a dream. I wanted to make it better, simply better. I didn't care. After Two years at university, I said, okay, I should do it because nobody will do it for me. So I started with an association called Schulbausteine für Gando e.V., which means uh, school bricks for, for Gando, because I had the idea to build a school for my people. And we start to look for the money. I start to make the design, but there was no money. Everybody was sending me everywhere. And then I found, was forced to found this association in order to raise the money. And I came home, said to my people, I have $50,000, let's build a school. And the next day I said to my people, we're going to use clay. And they said to me, what is wrong with Francis? He has lost his, his brain. The German guy make a brainwash to him because <laughs> they always wanted to change things. It is, they don't want us to be innovative. So, and we talk, we talk, we talk, we talk, and I happen to build this school. Completely by clay, with my people. <laughs> and I'm show you how we make it. You see the school, and we have a hill, not that big one, like in Cape Town, but we have rocks, and then we bring it down. Like you can see, women, young girl, old men, we put it to make the basement. It helps save money, what we don't have. And sometimes the children are, are an important part of my work. And please, please, don't put me to prison. 
um, <laughs> it will be punishing my people because what we're doing is such an event and everybody wants to be part of it. It happened to me that the child was hurt by a stone and I had some German friend there, so I have to take care of her. What happened is an aunt, because you bring an aunt in a village, I am, of course, a very important person. Um, nobody can talk to me like that, but they can go far away and bring somebody outside the society. Oh, she doesn't care. This person can talk to me. And then you discover somebody can and do like this to me. <laughs> All the time, doing like that. And I was asking, what, what is that? <laughs> so, and somebody took me, brought me out and said, you know, it's because of this girl you forbid, forbidden. You have forbidden her to work and she's not happy. The old family is not happy because this child is not able to be part of this event. So that's how things happen, how I build. Please, putting me to prison because of that is punishing my people. <laughs> and the buildings grow, like you can see, with the power of the people. And this is the building today, it's 10 years old. No maintenance, it's still like the same. Inside it looks like this, no more corrugated iron, but a ceiling made by clay bricks which we made ourselves. And a vegetable garden, it is important, it is dry. So I try to put techniques that people can survive and they can adapt it, really. That's what I'm doing. But ladies and gentlemen, how to explain drawings to people who are neither able to read nor write? Right. That's always the challenge. I start drawing by the hand on the sand and I make very simple sketches like this, and we just start to make it. There is no regulation. What we do is all the time to do a little model. And we make it, and always I am the first to spring on top like this. It's working. <laughs> and my staff are coming one by one to look at. But what you cannot see is this part of the picture, the entire village is waiting and looking. <laughs> no crash, wonderful technology. No crash, good technology. <laughs> but crash, forget it. <laughs> so this become a ceremonial in my work. So you build a structure like this and half of the village want to be on top. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, engineering has limitation. But what to do? Say to them, not all has, is allowed to go, come on top. You cannot say that because, oh, Francis said, not everybody is allowed to come on top. There is a risk, it can break. So no good technology. So I am fighting, trying to bring them away. But I can say to you, I had always heart beating. Boom, 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 boom. But it happened that still now, no accident. And it is working. And this is about teacher housing project. After I built a school in 2001, we were forced to build a teacher housing because the teacher was coming from the city. And they are educated people. They cannot stay in a village. You had to find an attraction for them. So we built this sister staff housing. It is a compound. So, and you make a, a single model in a hoping that people can adapt it. And you can bring it together to a big compound look like that, and you add ideas how to collect rainy water. You can see these uh, ways, and to bring the water away from the building to save it, dry season, grow vegetable, and eat it. That's what I'm doing. Not more, not less. It's very simple. Inside, very simple that the people can copy. That's what I'm doing, or adapt. Let me show you a very quick way how we, we use primitive tools to make a complicated structure like this. We are trying to have a vault, a big, big vault. And they just use water level and the machete to make it. And it's like that, like you can see. We put the roof, very simple way, with the people from the village. 
and come the time to put color to protect the windows against uh, corrosion. So you start talking about color to one person. Ten minutes later, you speak to ten persons. Half an hour later, you speak to half of the village. One hour later, you speak to all village. What I'm doing is, I just left, and I came back, and most of the time I found the building down. And you start to be angry because you, you, you are teach to use color, maybe, and you say, man, they could make it otherwise. But before you start complaining, somebody comes, it was me that fight for this color. And another one came, no, it's me. And then the entire village starts to, 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 to say, it's my building. And what I have discovered is, I just give them a frame, and they play, they use it, they own it. And really, they're happy. I'm building something like trees, big, big trees. And even animals like that I really love what we do. <laughs> and so they just use it, and they love it, because it's their building. It's not mine. And here is the battle. A teacher is sleeping, <laughs> and children want to play. And you know, those from Cape Town, you know what happened here. Who is the loser? Uh, and they use it, like you can see every corner of the building, inside. I am trying to create buildings which I call construire des maisons qui respirent, building breathing houses. That's what I'm trying. And it worked, really. People in my home call them fridge in Gandu. <laughs> and it's a big compliment. Not in Europe, but in, in Burkina Faso, yes, of course, yes. And my people are really proud about that. Really, you can see them. Because it's their, their, their project, their work. And one again, first, without education, I will never be able to do that. And that's what people from the West have the most. It is education. I don't have it in Burkina Faso. And this makes the difference. I'm going to show you in a very quick way. I don't have a notion of time. Um, how we put, how now, from the beginning, they was rejecting what I had as an idea, but now how I am allowed to introduce traditional techniques in a building. At the beginning, they were saying, we just want to have a concrete building because a school is something from France, and it has to be made by concrete and not clay. But look at what we do. We're making a, a clay floor just to see how, what, what we do. The young men come, yes, like this. They stand, like you can see. Beat them. And at a certain moment, their mother comes. And you can see my job. So I don't know how to interpret the word of Indaba. But we came together. We put everything together. And sometimes I feel like a director of an orchestra. They're full of talent. And I have to direct them. And I am taking care of the top of the building because of the plaster. And somebody called, Francis has to make a photo and show this evening. It is a, a great event. It gives you power. And the women come in this position, beating, like you can see, and giving water, really. Beating, beating, hours, hours. And by music, you can see it. And yes, of course, we love music. But what I have learned from my people, it is music, it's important. It's more than music. Imagine we're going to have this floor very flat. We don't use water level. We use nothing. But Ravi is stronger than I am. Matthew is stronger than other, uh, others. My colleague from the U are differently strong. And we beat. Everybody's beating on his corner. We're different strong, but with the music, at a certain moment, our beat become the same. So that happened, that through these techniques, we become very flat classrooms, like you can see. And the polish are camp, they make it, like you can see, like you can see, and this is the result. You can't remember? It, 
It is not Photoshop. It is reality. <laughs> and it's look that. So, and so we make it. And this was, by the way, my first contract um, as an architect. So that's why I, I made my diploma in 2004, and people start talking about my job, and I keep on building in Gando by myself, rising money. I didn't care. I don't only wanted to do my diploma because I had enough. I had my people as a client, and we just work. But somebody came asking me to do a project like that for him, and this is my stuff. From right, I cannot show to you, is Kabila. You have always a little budget. You, get, you go to the market, you want to have from this lot of money most material. And Kabila is the one in charge. Close to him is Baba, the oldest master I have, a greatest one. And close to him is Amede. Amede is the best of the best worker you have in the world. He's so great. He's, 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 He's welding all my roofs, and we're designing tools. We're making it together. And in, in the middle is Benjamin, the best of the best, best mason you have. He's so great. He's making every wall so wonderful, lovely. And this is Kayambo. Kayambo is the best of the best <laughs> in the world, really. Kuyombo, Kuyombo is the musician. Kuyombo is the first to go to the building site and call the people. And when we have hard work, he has to beat to make people get in trance so they can work harder. But in the evening, we don't have electricity. Kuyombo take out his guitar and play for the whole village. And in the next day, when we have guests, especially from Europe with the camera, then he put his, take out his clothes and show the muscle and can take very heavy, heavy, heavy stone. This is Kuyombo. <laughs> so, this project was concerned to use a lateral stone to make a, a building. And we just cut it like you can see, from this side to this side. I see I have five minutes left. So, just show you in a very quick way how we make it. We cut it like you can see, clack, clack. So, we lay them to a wall, and we lay them to a floor, we cut them, and I have to leave. So we make a simple, simple model, and I left, my people stay. They make it on the mango tree, not in the factory, really. And they put it together, and we put it together, we assembly them, and is Amede making the final cuts. And the building's finished, and people can be educated. Very simple. So, and we, in this design process, I cannot explain it because I don't want to bore you. It is an idea of natural ventilation, having opening on the top for light and the air to circulate very freely. The next biggest project was a competition which I won. Um, by the way, it's a park a landscape project. I, I am proud that my partner for landscaping was Anthony Wayne, from pra planning partner from Cape Town. And this park was in Bamako, in Mali. And we made it. We just had only eight months to do it. And we make it. I came, and there was it. There was a, a wondering, because I came and asked them to use local material. They was looking like that to me. <laughs> what is an exotic guy? What is he looking for? And we, we fight and fight and we managed to build something like that. One again, I was asking them to let us work with the people, with the local people, and you can see how we make it. Even the women was in charge for that project. You can see, laying stone, which has been cut to the build, at the building site, really. And put them together, and to have a structure like this. And it's open in September last year, and the client, His Highness Diaga Khan, was very impressed. And I hope uh, we could get more projects like that. 
because they opened it for, six, uh, for three weeks, and there was more than 80,000 visitors, paid visitors in that, in West Africa, where there is no money. <laughs> and it's like that. So for, for, you cannot design or plan something completely. So some just use the building itself as a tool. It is a sports center inside, and they just use it. And the same client just asked me, while we was fighting, asked me last year in March, if I don't want to design a museum for them. And I was fighting to finish the building, the biggest one. I said, no, I am not a supermarket. And then they just sent somebody who just who was uh, higher in the, in the hierarchy. Now, Francis, just a simple drawing. <laughs> so it's because it's a gift. And so you start making the simple drawings. Ah, it's wonderful, make design drawings. I am not a supermarket. I'm not able to do that. Somebody from the higher level came, and they put you under pressure. St still, you agree. And it happened that we built a museum in less than four months. It's called Musée de l'Architecture. Musée de l'Architecture en Terre. It is a multi. And we finished it. By the way, the water is not like the same here. <laughs> um, we fight how to have a building like I'm doing, which will not dominate this mosque. Uh, the clients start fighting. But for me, it was important to introduce clay building techniques. That was what I, was, I could do. And it's, it's no domination. The mosque is still there. And from the road, it's very easy. You have it. And it works, really. And you know, I have built a museum. So the last, latest, really the last project, um, the government in Burkina Faso met me 2008 in China. I was invited by the United Nations to be their expert. So what happened is when African politicians meet their, their uh, country people abroad, and they seem to be important, they ask, why, why we didn't know him? <laughs> so you have to be known in foreign before they, they consider you. Uh, what happened is that they asked me to, to build a park. I have to take part at the competition, 200 hectares. And they wanted to have a conference hall, hall like in China, double big like that. I couldn't say no, because it's, uh, it's denying when your, your, the authority call you, you have to go. You're, you're a son of the country. They know how to put you under pressure. <laughs> Whatever, we made a design like that. And it was looking like that, beautiful like China, but the problem was there was no money to build it. Simply, we uh, uh, respond to them, but it's happened in our countries. Because I wanted the building to breathe. That's why they had to respect it. And people was, had been demonstrating because they wanted to have that building after an exhibition, but no way. It is in West Africa. You cannot move things. So the very last thing is, it happened to you as an architect that the client came, and this guy was affected by cancer. And he had a dream. He wanted to build an opera, an African opera. So, and you didn't respond because who is going to finance it? Which art, which kind of opera is going to, 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 to play there? We don't need a house to do it. But he was affected by cancer. And he had a total German press on the project. And always, when I came with him, I had something like that. And two years long, my life was on the camera, like that. What happened is, I had to change his mind to make the project to something strong. It became an opera village. But unfortunately, he died last year in August. And we still fight to keep something from it. Uh, I can't say it to you, it's a secret. Uh, we're going to build a school for art and teacher housing and a lot of that. That will be good for him, I think. So, it's going to be something like that. So 
Let me go back to Gando before finishing it. I started, everybody was laughing, even, even in Berlin. You're too young to do that. You will hurt everywhere. You're too young to do that. To do that. Um, I remember, I don't really know your name, with your Harley Davidson story. I am impressed and I like it. We have to go forward. You don't know which clan you will meet. Some meet good, great clan with money. Money is still the problem, but when you have a vision, a good idea, you can fight for it. When I started my school project, I built for 120 children. And now I am building a big high school in my home village because we are about 1,500. And this is. Yeah. So that is. And my people are really, really proud of it. So thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.